Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First of all, I would like to join Professor Liu in thanking very much UNESCO and the government of the People's Republic of China for giving me the, the precious opportunity to attend this conference. What I will try to do today is to uh, describe what slow food, uh, how slow food approaches biodiversity and culture. Uh, for more than 25 years now, slow food has fought to preserve agriculture and food biodiversity as tools for ensuring a future for our planet and humanity as a whole. Because combined with climate change, the progressive loss of diversity of plant and animal species could prove a terrible scourge in the years to come. Slow food believes that it would be senseless to defend biodiversity without also defending the culture of the diversity. This diversity is the greatest, greatest creative force on Earth, the only condition possible for the maintenance and transmission of an outstanding heritage of knowledge to future generations. <laughs> but what does biodiversity have to do with culture? Biodiversity is a recent word. It was used for the first time in Washington in 1986 by the entomologist Edward O. Wilson and can be a misunderstood topic. In actual fact, it should be a simple concept because in its essence, it signifies nature. Life itself, diversity of life on many levels, from the smallest and most basic, like genes, the building blocks in life, to animal and plant species, up to the most complex levels like ecosystems. All these levels, levels interact and influence each other and each other's evolution. Studies from the University of Stanford have compared the species and varieties of an ecosystem to rivets of uh, an airplane, those that uh, hold an airplane together. If we remove the rivets for a while, nothing will happen and the airplane will continue to operate. But little by little, the structure will weaken, and at a certain point, just removing one rivet will cause the plane to crash. In the history of the planet, everything has a beginning and an end, and in every area, many species have become extinct. But never at the horrifying rate of recent years, one that is a thousand times greater than previous Eras. Last summer, after a study of many years, the prestigious University of Exeter in England declared that the Earth is undergoing its sixth mass extinction. Just imagine that uh, with the fifth mass extinction 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs disappeared. Yet there is a substantial difference between these and the extinctions of the past, the cause. For the first time, man is responsible. Man continues to destroy rainforests, cement the land, pollute waters and grounds with chemicals, pesticides and fertilizers, and accumulate plastic in the oceans. And he insists on excluding the Earth's last custodians, those small-scale farmers, shepherds and fishers that know and respect the fragile equilibrium of nature. Slow Food started its work with biodiversity in 1997 and our foot in the door that since the beginning has given us a unique perspective was culture. If biodiversity disappears, what will happen to our food culture? Together with the plants and wild animals, the plants domesticated by men, breed selected for milk or meat will also disappear. According to the FAO, 75% of plant varieties have been irreversibly lost. In the USA, the figure is 95%. Today, 60% of the world's food is based on three cereals, wheat, rice, and corn. Not on the thousands of rice varieties selected by farmers that once were cultivated in India and China, or on the thousands of varieties of corn that were grown in Mexico but on the few hybrid varieties selected and sold to farmers. Slow Food's first intuition was this, look after biodiversity, domestic biodiversity. 
meaning not just the panda or the seal, but also the Padman hen, as you can see in the picture, or in the Alpadona lamb, not the Edelweisses, but also the violet asparagus from Atenga. But not just this. We became interested in taste and the knowledge connected to it and traditional techniques of breeding, growing and processing that are part of the traditional culture of the people. And this led, led us to our second intuition on our arc of taste that in this context I would like to define like the slow food world heritage food list. We have also included transformed food, bread, cheeses, cured meats, sweets, because this is also biodiversity. Once we had identified our field of action, how did we work? We linked diverse words that normally didn't interact, like farmers, cooks, veterinarians, journalists, in order to achieve two objectives, maybe. The first objective is to help a small uh, scale farmers. So that to save a breed, we didn't start from genetic selection. To save an apple variety, we didn't start from a collection of varieties. Instead, we began by seeking out the shepherds that bred that certain breed, the farmers that still cultivated that apple, and we went and spoke to them. And with the, this crucial step, the specific project that I will describe later was launched. The second objective was that we want to achieve is uh, to raise awareness about the biodiversity. We need to work with producers and experts, but also with schools, journalists, restaurants, and so on. We need to write and tell these stories of producers with every tool at our disposal, because these teams transcend university lecture halls and scientific institutions and become the heritage of all of us. All of us. Biodiversity can be saved by scientists alone, nor by the powerful of the world, because it is of no interest to the market. And it's probable that Noah won't be arriving with his ark again. This battle, therefore, is one that needs to be taken up by us, together with all the people we manage to involve on our land every day. With slow food projects such as the Ark of Taste, the Presidia, the Earth Market, the uh, community and school gardens, and a thousand of other ideas still to come. I would like to focus now on the Art of Taste and Procedure projects in order to give you a practical example on how through the safeguard of culture, and in particular in this case food culture, slow food tries to promote environmental sustainability. The Art the of Taste is a slow food project that has the objective to collect small scale quality production that belong to the cultures, history, and traditions of the entire planet an extra extraordinary cultural heritage of fruits, vegetables, animal breeds, cheeses, bread, sweets, and cured meats. The art of taste was created by Slow Food to point out the existence of these products, to draw attention to the risk of their extinction with a few generations, to invite everyone to take action to help protect them. In some cases, this might be by buying and consuming them, in some, by telling their story and supporting their producers. And in others, such as the case of endangered wild species, this might mean eating less or none of them in order to present them and save their production. On the arc of taste, there are now 1,151 products from all over the world, which are many, but certainly don't mirror the extraordinary biodiversity of our Mother Earth. And therefore, during the Slow Food International Congress that was held in Turin in October 2012, the centrality of the biodiversity has been reaffirmed, the project has been relaunched, and the objective of cataloging 10,000 art of taste products has been set. Anyone can nominate a product through a nomination form that is available online on the website of the Foundation, uh, which is, if you're interested in visiting, is www.slowfoodfoundation.com Slow Food Presidia uh, are projects that take concrete action to protect the traditional product at risk of, uh, at risk of extinction. 
and have led to the operational phase of the Arc of Taste project. While the Arc of Taste is a catalog of products, the essential feature of Presidia is the relationship with producers and the organization of a concrete initiative to support them. Setting up a presidium means visiting farms, finding out how the producers do their work and what products they have, studying their social and cultural context, and researching their market so initiatives to support them can be put in place. Through Presidia, slow food doesn't only protect traditional products at risk of extinction. There are other two categories of Presidia. These are projects to defend traditional techniques at risk of extinction, of fishing, livestock farming, processing, or cultivation, or projects taking action to protect an endangered rural landscape or ecosystem, for example, ancient olive groves or citrus orchards. The social, cultural, agri, environmental, and economic results of the Presidia project in Europe, and I have some copies of the research that might have been distributed before. Um, the, the results of the Presidia project in Europe have been analyzed, and the results show a general improvement on all the three scales of sustainability, being social, cultural, agri, environmental, and economic. We are therefore very proud of uh, the work that our association is doing, but also we also realize that there is a lot yet to be done, and we really hope that more and more people will be willing to join our battle, because the battle to save biodiversity is, isn't like any other battle. It's the battle for the life of our planet. Thank you.